Hello everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. Before we get into the video, I want to say a big thank you to all of you who have pre-ordered my debut album so far. It's one week until the release date, 6th of September. You can pre-order it through my web shop, link below. In this video, I'm going to explain what to look for when you are choosing your recorder. Say you're there in the recorder shop or on a website, you've got all the choice in front of you. How do you know which one to pick? What do you test and listen for? First, the price range. I divide recorders into roughly three price ranges. First, you've got the plastic instruments, relatively very cheap. These are really good as an entry level model or if you want something extra to be practicing with or playing outside. I've actually done a whole video on which plastic instrument to choose. So if you're going for that, I suggest following the link. In your mid-range instruments, you have got wooden factory built models. These uh, can be very good. They're made in a factory, but a lot of them are finished by hand, so you're still getting a quality product. And we're talking about brands like Merck and Mollenhauer. And then on your top tier, you have fully handmade instruments. These tend to be by one single builder who really does the whole process on their own from start to finish. Obviously, this comes with a much higher price tag because it's really intensive in terms of labor hours. And in my collection, I have a mixture of plastic instruments, factory instruments and handmade instruments. In this video I'm going to be talking about your regular baroque models of recorders, you know the ones that just look like a general recorder. Of course there are other builds, there are medieval recorders, renaissance recorders, modern designs, but these are a bit more specialised. Um, so I'll cover those in other videos. Just as an aside, I get questions from a few of you saying like, I want a recorder but I want a bit of a different sound, a bit of a bigger sound and for that I would actually go for the dream recorders. These are based on renaissance instruments but play really easily and are in a very affordable price range. Next thing, look at these five instruments. What is different about all of them? That's right, they are all made of a different wood. To be honest, it's not as all-encompassingly important as you think. I have recorders in all of the woods and yeah, they, they're all fine basically. So you have woods from the very light maple to the very dark and dense grenadilla and then everything in between, pear wood, olive wood, rose wood. These do give different sounds. The lighter the wood, the kind of sweeter and brighter and clearer the sound. The darker the wood, the kind of heavier and richer it's going to be. So picking the woods can be a kind of guide for you, but really don't worry about it so much. Darker woods tend to be a bit more expensive, partly because maybe the wood itself is a bit more expensive, but because it's denser it takes more time to work with. Uh, that doesn't mean that lighter woods like maple are bad. In fact, a lot of my instruments are maple, including all of my Renaissance ones. The best thing I can recommend is that you get the instruments in your hands yourself and try them out. If you are lucky enough to live in a place where you can go to a shop that sells lots of recorders, that is brilliant. Of course this isn't the case for everybody, a lot of you will be buying your instruments over the internet. The best thing you can do is call the place you are buying it from, the music shop or whatever, and explain to them kind of what you're looking for, what kind of music you like to play, and they will be able to advise you. Okay. Say you are there with a recorder or a selection of recorders, you want to try them out and see if it's something for you. What do you look for? The first thing is to look at the condition of the instrument. This is especially important if you're buying a second-hand recorder. Check that there are no obvious things like scratches, cracks. If it has a big crack, that's a bad sign. If the labium here, especially this edge inside, is damaged, that is a big no-no. This part is what helps to make the sound if that's damaged. Ugh. If the thumb hole on the back is worn down, that's not so bad. That can be easily repaired by adding an extra ring, so don't let that stop you. You also want to take the instrument apart and look inside 
check that there's no damage and check that there is no mold or fungus growing as this can actually make you seriously ill. If the instrument is just a bit tired or if you feel it and it's just a bit dry on the inside, that's generally okay. You can oil it, you can get it serviced. If it has damage or cracks, I would leave it alone. Let's get to playing. The most important thing in my opinion is the sound. You have to love how it sounds because you're gonna be the one playing it. So just give yourself some time to have a good play. When you're testing recorders, take a few books with you of music that you know well, music that you like, and take some time to play through it. It's good to test the instrument um, louder than you normally would and softer than you normally would. Maybe it actually sounds better played in one of those ways. If you're buying from the recorder maker themselves, it's actually a good idea to ask them to play it for you. Um, then you get more of an idea of what they were going for when building the instrument. And of course, don't forget to play low, high, testing out all different styles. After the sound, it's really important to test the tuning. Um, a couple of things can be adjusted by the maker, but if it's really, really out of tune, that's probably not a good place to start. It can be helpful to take a tuner with you to get an idea of the general pitch. For example, is the A440 or 442 or more like 438? If you're buying an instrument for chamber music, it could have the most beautiful sound in the world, but if you're consistently three hertz lower than the rest of your ensemble, you're gonna have a headache. After that, let's check some intervals. Octaves are, of course, super important. <laughs> After your octaves, it's a good idea to play some chords, then you're checking your fifths, your fourths, your thirds. Definitely test all of the important keys, but don't be afraid to do the more unusual ones, like, I don't know, C sharp. You're gonna to want to test some notes like your E flats and B flats, the ones that can be played in a few different fingerings to check which one is gonna sound the best. If for these accidentals you're having to take a lot of really crazy alternative fingerings, that could be also be something to think about. Then it's really important to take a piece that you know very well, like a Baroque Sonata, and play that. That is gonna highlight for you um, any notes that are actually lower or higher than you're used to. You've checked the sound, you've checked the tuning, now you want to check the response. The response is how well the instrument speaks, how well the notes come out without cracking or breaking or sounding weird. I would check the low notes with some vibrato, and with some articulation. You want to make sure that they aren't too difficult to produce and that they have a nice rich sound. And I would check the high notes with some articulation. Especially the difficult notes like this fingering, the C sharp on an alto, and the F. I'll say this now, my Yamaha tenor, the top C only speaks if I slur it from a B or if I take an alternative fingering. And now I think, why did I make life so difficult for myself by buying that instrument? And yes, of course, on pretty much all recorders, the um, response will improve after you've played it in. So you could have been playing it for a little while and you think, oh, it feels a little bit tight, it sounds a little bit tired, that can improve with playing in. Which brings me to my next point. If you're still not sure, if possible, leave it for a day, come back, and try again. Some makers or shops will even let you take two instruments to try them out for a week or two and decide which one you want. So if you can do that, that's really good. And then at the end of the day, 
Go with your gut. Trust your instinct. You don't have to go for the most expensive one. You don't have to go for the one that everybody else has. Go with the recorder that keeps drawing you to it. And if you actually don't feel like buying any of them, then don't. Um, I know the feeling, you go somewhere, you want to buy it, you've got the money saved up, you're ready, but if you haven't got the right one there, then don't do it. And I'll say this, there is one of my recorders, I'm not gonna say which one, that I do regret buying. Um, I had doubts at the time, but I was there and I wanted to buy one of those recorders so badly and I did even though I kind of knew deep down that it wasn't the right one and now it's fine it's fine but yeah it could have been better <laughs> what a terrible problem to have and then enjoy it enjoy your new recorder I hope that this guide to choosing an instrument has helped you that was it as always you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here in the corner over here is a link to my web shop where you can pre-order my debut album coming out next week and up here is a link to my guide for wooden recorders where I play on a whole bunch of different woods different models so you can hear what they sound like thanks for watching and have a great day bye